Hi Knitters, um, welcome to this surprise episode of Our Knits and Pearls. I am your host, Aro of Our Knits and Pearls. As always, you can find my Ravelry Instagram, Ko-Fi, Patreon linked in the description below, as well as links to any of my makers, dyers, and designers that I talk about in today's episode. And um, yeah, like I said, I know you guys weren't expecting to see me this week because the last time I recorded uh, last week, I said that I would see you guys after Portland and that was totally my expectation. But I, I finished some stuff and I started working on some stuff and I knew I wanted to show you guys as soon as possible. And I knew that after Portland, I would have so much to talk about and so much to show you in general that it would be like a super monstrously long episode. So I thought, hey, while I'm here, why not just split it up a little bit and um, show you guys what I've been working on and what I finished. Um, so I mentioned last week that Pavlova, the big fluffy white uh, sweater was going to be released on the 24th. That's still happening. Um, the day after that, Chalet Days by Samantha Guerin comes out. And I did finish it, um, I finished it a, a, a while ago, pretty much the day I showed this to you guys without the sleeves. I like cranked it out. Um, it was, I was impressed with myself, honestly, but it really, it fits like a glove. It's so flattering. I love this and the color is everything, everything that I wanted it to be. Um, for those of you who need a reminder, this is Cedar House Yarns in the color A Wine Sap and the contrast color is Quail's Egg and Quail's Egg has some delicate brownish speckling in it. It's not really a white, it's almost a pink, um, but I, I love this yoke. I love this sweater. Samantha Guerin, so talented, so sweet, and I'm just obsessed, obsessed. Um, yeah, I'm wearing it out today. I'm going on a, a date. Uh, it's the middle of the day on Monday, but um, in the US, it's a holiday, a federal holiday known as President's Day or George Washington's birthday, whatever. But anyway, I have the day off work, so I'm going on a date and I'm wearing it because it makes me feel so powerful. <laughs> um, yeah, so I love this. I love it so much. Um, so this comes out this week as well. Keep an eye out. Follow Samantha Guerin if you're not because she's so talented. Ugh, these designers. Yeah. Um, and I, you guys know, I love, I love working with the designers I already know and have a great relationship with, but I also try to make it a point to find new designers to work with. Um, because I think it's really important, one, to keep, you know, fresh blood coming into the community and also to make sure that these uh, less established designers are getting good feedback and getting good exposure so that they can build up their followings. And um, one such designer that's a little bit lesser known is called Vert and Rose or Vert if you're French, but I'm not, like I've established. But um, yeah, so Vert and Rose, um, she has designed something called the Malwina sweater. And I cast on yesterday and I've gotten a little bit farther than I expected. First off, it uses US 10s, which are chunky boys, chunky needs, needles, needs, yeah. They're chunky needles and um, it's originally designed for an Aran weight. But what I have done is, I, as I've talked about many times, I don't have a lot of Aran weight in my stash. So what I did was I found a gorgeous sweater quantity of the Wandering Flock in the colorway Silver Fox. Um, this is a discontinued DK base, actually. This is DK weight. It's um, MCN, so 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. She discontinued this base. I'm kind of sad that she did because it's lovely, but because she did, I got this on sale when it came, when it was, you know, being discontinued. But <laughs> let me just like throw the yarn that I'm using, hold on. And then the yarn that I'm holding with it is um, Knitting for Olive uh, Silk Mohair in the colorway Cloud. This actually is slightly different than their normal batch of Cloud. I have, so Cloud, for those of you who need a reminder, Cloud is like my favorite mohair color. It's this beautiful off-white, slightly pink color. And usually it tends to be a bit warmer, but this batch is much cooler. And I know that the cool tone is the not normal one because I've ordered so many batches of Knitting for Olive Cloud that like, it's probably like four different batches and this is the odd one out. So statistically speaking, I think I'm in the right here, 
but it's still lovely. And paired with this, it goes really well to become this. And this is the raglan detail. So uh, the raglan detail, actually, it looks like cable, but it's not cable. And that's what I love about it um, because it lets me get this look with only slip stitches and yarn overs. It's, there's no cabling involved. You do not need to mess with cabling. And I think that's really accessible for even first time knitters. So I love trying out designs that I think an adventurous first time garment knitter would be able to tackle. Um, yeah, so that's the yarn choice I did. And I really love the way this is working up. The fabric is gorgeous, obviously super soft, very delicate halo from the mohair. And the raglan detail will continue on to sleeve separation. And what really uh, I fell in love with the Mount Lena sweater for was that it's going to have very, very dramatic lace detail on the sleeves. It's quite a simple body, like there's no detail on the body. I might choose to continue the raglan detail down the body, but I'm not sure I haven't committed yet. But it's the sleeves that are really going to do it. And I am just about to sleeve separation, so I can't wait to show you guys more as it works up but I am really excited about this design and it, I think it's so beautiful. It's, it's a great fabric, it's a great design. Um, I'm really excited that there are so many amazing designers still coming up with incredible ideas and I, I just love being included in y'all's tests. I hope you know that. Um, but yeah, so that's coming up and like I said, it works out super fast. This was one day of work. So this might be sweater number seven of the year. And another test knit I started. So you guys remember I talked about the ruffle thing and I'm glad you guys agree. Like ruffles are just, it's just a trend, not even only in knitwear. Like I, it's just, it, it's, it's in right now. And um, this is the yarn that I chose, uh, that I showed you last time and it's working up beautifully. I will say, I forgot how fiddly mohair is to work with when it's held single. Like especially when you're doing increases like I'm trying to do make ones and I'm like get in there like so I've had to use wooden needles um for those of you who don't know I have likey and, and a likey Lika. I think it's supposed to be pronounced Lika. Lika. Oh, I don't know um I have a Lika <laughs> interchangeable set and uh it's the driftwood set so they look like this and um aesthetically I don't think Licka can be beat. They're beautiful cases, gorgeous cases, very well thought out, aesthetically very pleasing. I got it when I was still a student. Um, and the reason I didn't go for something a little bit different, <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know, I like Addy needles the best. I like how slick they are. I like to hear the click of the metal. Um, and they just, they make my knitting faster, I feel like. Oh, I feel like I knit fast enough already, but I, I like the smoothness of the feel of the metal in my hands. You guys know I love a smooth yarn, and I also love a smooth needle. And Lika needles, generally, some are smoother than others, um, and some are a little bit rough. Um, the production, I'm not sure if it's just a difference in how much coating they put on or polish they put on, but I do feel the roughness of the wood sometimes and it's not my favorite but when I was a student I couldn't afford you know a $200 set. Lika sets are like $125 so I felt like yeah if I'm gonna have extra money I would rather spend it on yarn than the needle set so I got the Likas and they worked fine for their purpose I've used it for many years but I'm at that point now in my career as an attorney where I might be able to swing a little bit extra money towards a needle investment and maybe I want to upgrade to Addies which I like better but I've never used the Addy interchangeables actually I've only used the Addy like set cables so I'm not 100% sure if I want to commit to that because I've heard some some things about the joining I just I haven't made up my mind everybody's asked me like what needles I use what needles I recommend I can't recommend anything, it's a personal preference. I love the smoothness of metal needles, but I might choose to do something different. I haven't committed to anything. So yeah, um, but anyway, you have to use wood for single held mohair because I spent like a good two and a half minutes on one stitch increase trying to do it with metal. 
because it's just so sleek you can't get it back there like it was impossible so uh switching to the wood helped immensely and made it move a lot faster and i love this color again this is cake wool co and the colorway lovely and it is at very aptly named because it is quite lovely um this is what it looks like caked up and i love it i really am excited about it um i just started this last night as well as the melwina i'm on i'm on a kick these days um <laughs> I think I'm honestly knitting so much because I'm like anxious about Portland. Uh, I am actually. I am very anxious about uh, Rose City Yarn Crawl because it's going to be like seven of us in a house using one car. And I know we can Uber separately and Lyft separately if we so choose. But like for me, um, I like to have things planned and to factor in seven individuals who are going to be on separate eating schedules who are going to you know have different preferences about where we go like it to me is is very stressful and when i get stressed um i don't respond well <laughs> i get cranky and i get hangry i actually had a nightmare that i got hangry and everybody hated me after and that made me really sad i woke up and i messaged everybody i'm like i just want to tell you guys i had a nightmare about this and I apologize in advance for what I said when I was hungry. Yes, I, yeah, like these are my friends and I've just, I've hung out with them individually and Megan and Shanna, of course, you know, the three of us, but I've never had a big group. I've never really been comfortable in big groups before. So I'm actually kind of nervous, um, which is probably why I'm stress knitting these days. Um, so those are the two whips that I've been working on. And I also have my finished binna tunic. So remember I said I wasn't sure if I was going to keep going dress length, mini dress length, full length dress. I have decided not to do dress length because the more I thought about it, I work in an office. I sit on my butt all day. And this is, it's a very soft, like almost single ply yarn. And if I sit on my butt all day, I'm going to end up matting it. Like it, it's, there's going to be a noticeable, like, fabric difference from where my butt sits on the seat all day so i decided to just um cut it off at normal sweater length i repeated the rib detail that's on the collar so you see here they do the pearl ridge like this one does actually um and it, i repeated it both on the rib hem and the rib sleeve so that's a slight modification and of course shortening it is a modification as well um but it's lovely, lovely. Like I talked to you guys about the yarn before from Gregoria Fibers in her base Cloud. I adore this base. I already have plans to make another sweater. I'm probably holding it with mohair, a colored mohair, so it adds a little bit of, of difference. But it's such a classic design. It's so flattering. Um, I really am so impressed with how easy her patterns are to follow along. Like this is the neatest the neatest shoulder pickup I've ever done. You can't even see it. You can't even see it. That's like, for me, uh, picking up stitches is something that I worked on only last year that I got pretty decent at. And for me, like I see the huge improvement like along here even, and I'm just really proud of myself. And um, Gregoria Fibers really just does an incredible job. And I'm so glad I got to be included in this task. I will have, I'll take finished object photos of this in Portland with my friends because I won't have time before I leave. I leave in two days, so I won't have time between work and everything else to take FO photos, but I will have finished object photos of this guy and this guy. And um, now is a good chance to talk to you guys about what I have planned for, for Rose City Arm Crawl. So Rose City Arm Crawl, the first place we know we're absolutely going, on Thursday morning, bright and early, when they open up, is Naughty Lamb because Explorer Knits, Allie of Explorer Knits, is doing a trunk show at Naughty Lamb. And y'all know I love Explorer Knits. Um, I actually, as soon as I heard she was going, I messaged her and I was like, hey, so um, would you rather I bring my Virgo pullover or would you rather I bring my Amara sweater? And if you recall, both of those are knit in Explorer Knits yarn. And she said, oh, and I said, okay, me and my outfit changes will be there. Um, my outfit changes and I will be there. Um, so 
yeah, I'm bringing both outfits to Naughty Lamb, absolutely. Um, so I can meet Allie in person and, you know, maybe, maybe buy some more yarn. <laughs> but yeah, that's the first thing I have planned. I'm actually kind of worried about the luggage situation. And it's not, I'm not worried about bringing back yarn because I have Shanna and Megan who are like packing extra bags and they're like, oh yeah, if we could go to the post office, we can ship our clothes back so we can bring our yarn on the carry-on and know it's safe. Like that's, <laughs> like you can see why these are my people, right? Like we're obviously like so invested in the yarn that we would rather lose our clothes in the shipping than we would our yarn. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm going with. If I need to, I'll ship back something, whatever. I'm more worried about getting my stuff there in the first place because I have outfits, like I have whole outfits that I have planned and there's not a lot of space in a carry-on and I hate giant bags. So I'm like, should I do two carry-ons? Should I pay for a check bag? I don't, and just for outfits, just for outfits. Like how dedicated am I to this? And the answer is probably extremely dedicated, but um, that's just what I've been thinking over the past few days. Also, it turns out roasted yarn crawl uh, during that time. It's going to be rainy and, and a little bit chilly, so I'll have to bring a coat, but not my wool, but not my fancy like faux fur coat because that's actually a wool cashmere blend and I definitely don't want to get water on that. So I'll have to bring another coat. I'm just, I'm like reeling. Um, we are going to every store that's participating in the roasted yarn crawl and I, there's only a handful. I think it's like five or six, but we are... <laughs> We're planning on driving out to um, Dal Dales, Dallas, where House of Alamode moved to. So House of Alamode used to be in Gresham, Oregon, but now they moved out, you know, farther from Portland. And it is a almost two hour drive, almost. Um, and I have been the designated driver. So uh, I love driving. I love long drives. Y'all know I drove to Oklahoma to and fro a couple times, drove to Vegas to and fro. Um, I like driving, but um, I've never driven with like six other people before. I've only driven myself like singing really loudly in the car. So I'm not sure how this is gonna work out, but yeah, I'm just um, getting ready for Rose City Yarn Crawl thinking about where I want to eat and just really excited to show you guys the yarn that I get. If I get a lot, I, again, I'm not planning on getting a lot, but, oh, reminds me one last thing to show you before I close this extra episode where I'm just ruminating. Um, I did get one yarn acquisition and this is from Wild Star Fibers and she's a less established dyer and I really hope that um, sharing her with you guys gets her some more attention. Her name is Nakia and I contact her after she shared this colorway which is called Bubbly and I asked her to do me a custom dye job of a sweater quantity in DK and she was more than happy to oblige. She was a very sweet woman. Um, like I said this colorway is Bubbly and it looks very me. Not today with today's palette but it's a very lovely pink color with blue and purple variegation, slight variegation. Um, this is her Nebula DK weight base, which is 100% superwash, 218 yards per 100 grams. Um, I'm just really excited to use it. I have an idea of what to use it for, but I'm really struggling with the yarn choice on that project. I don't want to talk about it yet. I'll talk about it once I've started and picked the yarn, but, um, yeah, again, this is Wild Star Fibers. She's really lovely. I think you guys should check her out and she will be linked in the description below as well as everybody else. Um, yeah, I'm really glad I didn't forget that because I really wanted to, to share her with you guys. Um, okay, so this is definitely the last episode before the Portland trip. And again, um, I'm expecting to do, you know, video clips of every single shop that I go into and hopefully video clips of the different makers that I'm going with and so you guys can hear from them. And I'll show you guys lots of yarn when I get back. Some yarn when I get back, we don't know how much. I'm not making any commitments, but um, yeah. Um, I know this is a short one. Again, this is just like a slight teaser and for me to like 
brain dump all the whips that I'm working on so I don't have to feel like uh, I'm not updating you guys and stressed about that. But as always, uh, thank you for spending time with me. I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, I will definitely see you when I get back from Portland. Bye friends.